Well, hello, Mustard Seed Preschool, and welcome to February's edition of Chapel Time. Uh, as you probably remember, I am Pastor Nate, here to bring you a message about love. And I know that you guys have been talking all February about the idea of love and God's love. And how do we love each other well? What, what does it look like when people love each other well? And I know that you guys have been asking questions such as, what does it feel like to be loved? Who is it that loves you? Um, is it possible that you're being loved or can feel love even when you might be in trouble or getting disciplined? And so I want to tell you a story from my life that um, was kind of challenging last month. As I told you guys, I have a four-year-old daughter. Her name is Maya, and we like to have tons of fun together, and we love to go play on playgrounds. Anyone like to play on playgrounds? Yeah, I like to play on playgrounds too. Well, one day I had the chance to walk to a local neighborhood playground with Maya, and we got there, and we played, and we played, and we did slides, and we did swings, and we did the teeter-totter, and then it was time to go. And so I told Maya, it's, you know, it's time to go. Time to go, Maya. And unfortunately, you guys have probably seen this before, she didn't listen to me. And so then I had to warn her. I had to give her a second chance. And then finally, when she wouldn't come and gather her things and leave with me, I had to punish her. And when we got home, she had to do a timeout. And one of the things that I had to tell her, because she was really upset when she did this time out and she was crying and she was fussing and she didn't understand why. And so we talked walked through why she got the time out, but I stuck through and I made her do her time out. But I told her that even while she was in trouble, even while she was doing her time out, that I still loved her, that I still cared for her, that I still wanted the best things for her in her life. And specifically, in this case, I was making her sit down and think about the things that she had done because I loved her. And so oftentimes, we show our love in many different ways. And so I want to talk about a story uh, from this devotional book today. And it's called Sisters and Brothers. And it's about the story of Mary and Martha from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. And in this story, it says, Jesus had been walking and teaching for a long time. He was tired and he was hungry. And so he went to the house of some friends and they invited him to come in and to stay for dinner. And there were two sisters living at the house. Their names were Mary and Martha. And Mary loved Jesus and wanted to hear what he had to say. So she sat near him and listened to him teach about God. Martha also loved Jesus. So she ran right to the kitchen to fix him some dinner. She wanted to do something nice for him. After a while, Martha got angry because Mary wasn't helping her in the kitchen or with anything to get ready. Martha went to Jesus and said, My sister isn't doing anything to help. I'm doing all the work. Jesus, will you tell her to help me? But Jesus said, Martha, don't be so worried. Don't be so upset. What Mary is doing is important too. She's listening to my words. And so sometimes I think we can relate to Martha. Sometimes we feel upset when a sister or a brother gets more attention than we do. Or we feel like we have to do more work than they do. We don't understand what's going on. Maybe we even feel left out of a game or something like that. And so we think, you know, we might even get angry like Martha did and say something like, look at me, look over here, guys. What I'm doing is better than what they're doing. But brothers and sisters don't always do things the same way. But in a family, there is always plenty of love for every person. When we look for ways to get along with one another, it makes the whole family happier. And so there's some opportunities to talk to God about this. 
to talk to God about what love looks like in a family situation and how it's okay to allow someone else to have attention. And so we can say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for each person in my family. Please help me to show them how much I love them every single day. Amen. Even if the way that we love each other sometimes looks different depending on the person. So I want to ask you some questions. What would you say? What do you think about these things? In the pictures that you can see, what kinds of different things are the brothers and sisters doing? What activities are they participating in? What do you think? Relating back to our story, why do you think Martha was upset with her sister? What do you think it was about that story? And the way Mary was sitting with Jesus and Martha was having to do all the work, why do, you, why do you think that Martha was upset? And now when you think about your own family, boys and girls, can you talk about some of the ways the people in your family are different from one another? Do they show their love differently at different times? Do different people like to do different special things to show you? Their love, or do you like to do different things for different people to show love to them? And lastly, why do you think Jesus wants brothers and sisters and parents to all get along and to love each other? Why do you think that? I think God likes it when we love each other because <clears throat> it's a lot easier for us to get along. It's a lot easier for us to feel good about ourselves. It's a lot easier for our brothers and sisters to feel good about themselves. And it's a lot easier for them to then show love to other people. So the more that we keep loving the people around us, the easier it will be for them to love others and to create a world that is more surrounded and filled with love. And so I want to talk about that from the Bible today. And in 1 John chapter 4, John is writing and he's talking about God's love for us and for others. And specifically in this chapter, he's writing that some of his friends in his town had been uh, denying something about Jesus, what we call the incarnation. So they were denying that Jesus had ever come to this world. And so John doesn't want to focus specifically on that anymore. He wants to, to think about what does it look like to love people no matter what actions they are doing? So no matter what they are doing, what does it look like to love other people well? And so he writes, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love probably does not know God. Because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. That he sent his one and only son Jesus into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God or are very capable of loving each other well. But that God loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice for us and the hard and bad things that we do. So dear friends, since God loved us, we also ought to love one another regardless of what they do. Because even when we were doing the wrong things, even when we were doing naughty things from time to time, God still sent his son Jesus to love us well, to love us unconditionally, and to show us how to love others. And so I'm wondering if you'll close by bowing your head and praying with me for just one minute. We'll pray, dear Jesus, we are so thankful for your love. We are so thankful that you sent your son Jesus to die to make us right. Lord, we are so thankful that Jesus showed us the perfect way to sacrificially love one another. That you showed us how to love our brothers and sisters well. 
that you showed us how to love our friends and our family well. Lord, that we learn how to treat others so well through Jesus. We pray that you give us the strength and the courage to love the people around us, even when we don't like some of the things that they're doing. We pray these things in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, again, this was Pastor Nate, and I thank you for joining me for the February edition of Chapel Time. See you next month.